background so this is just going to be a general Photoshop refresh uh, nothing too serious nothing too hectic just to run through some of the basics uh, with regards to Photoshop I'm not sure how much experience you have inside Photoshop or what you do know what you don't know so this um, the purpose of this is just to run through um, just some general basics with regards to the program just to help you get a little bit more familiar with it and uh, if need be then I can do a more in-depth sort of Photoshop refresh or Photoshop um, program navigation if it is required in the future so for now the first thing that um, I want to just touch on is how you can open up images or import images into your workspace so currently I just have a A4 workspace open uh, it's in RGB mode and the way in which I'm going to open up the image to drag it into this document I want to open up the image and not necessarily import it so to do that I'm going to press Control O to open and this is the image that I want to bring in so as you can see when I open it it opens up a new tab inside Photoshop so the way Photoshop works, you have your general toolbar on top of here with your file, edit, image, layer, type, select, filter, 3D, view, window, and help. Uh, right below that, depending on which tool you are, you have selected to use, there are various options for you to um, be more specific with regards to how you want that tool to function. And over here on the right hand side, you have the properties of the image or the canvas. You also have adjustments which you can be, which you can make to this image. Towards the bottom is your general tab with your layers, the different channels of the image as well as paths. And on top here we have our swatches and there is a history tab so you can see exactly what you've done and you can undo different functions if you need to. But for now my goal is to um, move this image which I've just opened into my original document which is untitled. For now because I haven't saved it and I didn't name my document when I created the document. So to do that, what you want to do is you just want to unlock this image. Then as you unlock it, it no longer is the background, it is now layer zero. And with my general selection tool over here, I can now move it around and place it where I want to. So I want to drag it, click and drag, move all the way up to my document where I want to place the image and just left click and it's going to tell you that there's a little bit of a different color space, which is fine, that's no problem. I'm going to click OK and you can see it already creates a new layer, layer 1 and our original background layer is white. So what you can do as well, just identify your different layers, uh, you can rename them, you can double click and rename them, so this will be photograph and press enter and now it's renamed. Uh, you can also toggle the visibility of this layer, so as I remove that you can see my background layer over here if I remove the background layer then you get the transparency grid over here because there's nothing left on our document so I'm just going to toggle everything back on uh, some other things to take note of is that you can also lock layers so this is how you would lock layers inside of Photoshop so you just click the little lock icon once you've selected which layer you want to lock and at this point I cannot move the layer at all and once I unlock it then I have the option and ability to move the photograph layer around. Your different blend modes you'll also find over here on top. So over here just by the normal I'm going to click the drop down there's a whole bunch of blend modes and you can sort of see that Photoshop is already applying them once I hover over them. So at the moment you don't really notice uh, too much happening because it isn't necessarily another image behind it but just to give you an example let me find another image to open so I'm just gonna go control O again to open go here 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 let's take these flowers okay so I've opened up another image I'm going to unlock the background and drag it into my workspace and as you can see it has now made this image into a different layer. So once I've dragged these two images into my working document, I can close them. I don't want to save changes. So the reasoning for me opening up the document instead of importing the document or placing it. So you can import items as far as I understand. So here you can import different types of items, documents and that type of stuff. But I'd rather just open up the 
op open up the photo, let Photoshop understand that this document has been opened and then you can drag it into your workspace into the current document which you're working on. So what I want to do now is I just want to enlarge this image. So the way in which we can do that is once the image layer is selected that I want to enlarge, I'm going to press Ctrl T and that's going to be the transform tool and over here on the edges I have the opportunity to scale this image as large or as small as I want to. So in previous versions of Photoshop it would not scale uniformly unless you held down shift but with the newer versions of Photoshop they've adjusted that feature. So if I hold down shift and left click and move around then you can see I'm not scaling uniformly. Whereas if I just left click and drag I'm scaling uniformly. So just take that into consideration when you do start scaling your different images and then once that's done I'm just going to cl uh, click the check mark on top here to confirm my scale and right now I just want to move the flowers behind the girl on the deck and I'm going to go back to my blend modes so over here by normal you can start to see exactly what's happening once I hover over so that's what darken would look like multiply color burn linear burn, color dodge, there's a whole bunch of different effects and different effects and techniques which you can apply with this just to get a different uh, feel for your image, you can also start masking, uh, but this is just general blend modes and how they work, uh, it works best when it's one photo on top of another photo and you can just see as I scroll through the different types of effects which you can get. Okay, so we're going to leave it on normal for now. And I just want to start tackling a few more uh, tools over here on the left hand side tool panel. So this is our normal move tool, our selection tool. You can see if you hover over it, the shortcut for it is V. And over here, this is just the um, marquee tool. So it's, it's just a normal selection tool. So for example, if I select, draw a selection box around this woman and I go back to my move tool then you can see as I hover over my selection there's a little scissors icon so if I left click and drag I am now moving this portion which I've just selected into a different position on the photo so I'm essentially cutting it out so I use the marquee tool to draw a selection box and then I'm using my move tool to simply cut it out and move it around so once I'm done I can click Control D and now it's a fixated fixture fixture on this picture. I can't reselect it again without cutting out the background. So it's quite a destructive process but it's very useful if you want to uh, cut out certain elements that you don't want. So for example if I don't want a little bit of this ocean over here I can just select it and I can either delete it or I can simply go back to my move tool, left click and move it around wherever I want to move it to. Say for example over here and I'm going to press Ctrl D when I'm finished and now this is sort of the image that I have in front of me. As you can see every time I undo I'm just using Ctrl Z, the same function applies inside of InDesign or Illustrator even After Effects. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to look at is just the lasso tool. So same thing, just doing a general selection but this is a more of a free selection so you can see the same principle applies as the marquee tool except it's more of a freeform selection kind of uh, functions in the same manner as a pencil tool something along those lines just if you want to isolate various specific areas if you just want her hat for example and you're not going to achieve that using a square or a circle marquee then you can use the lasso tool so if you do notice as well these icons here on the left hand side on the left hand side have tiny little grey triangles on the bottom right of them. That means that they have multiple functions attached to them. So if I hover over them and I left click and hold down my left click, you can see that there are numerous different functions that are related to our main function. So the main function is the rectangular marquee tool, but I can change that to the ellipse marquee tool or a single row or a single column marquee tool. So right now I have an ellipse marquee tool and the same function applies if I want to cut out certain parts of the image. If for example you wish to cut out 
this woman from the image and place her on a different on a different layer so I'm just going to select her with the rectangular marquee tool and I want to cut her out but I don't want to damage the photograph I can press Control J and what Control J does is that it takes my selection it copies only that selection and places it on a new layer so you can see now it created layer 2 once I press Control J so just to show you what that does if I make the photograph layer invisible and the layer 1 invisible then I have a layer that has this woman lying on a piece of deck and just to show you that it has not damaged the original photo so this is the cutout and this is the original photo so it's a non-destructive way of cutting out different parts of images while retaining the main image left untouched and undamaged okay we can also use the magic wand selection tool uh, so what the magic wand selection tool is going to do is it's going to find pixels or points that have very similar sort of contrast and select them so right now I selected over here and you can see that it's trying to pick up as much of the dark pixels as possible and you can adjust this by playing with the tolerance so right now the tolerance is on 32 I'm going to reduce it to 15 meaning that there should be more of an accurate selection so not as much as we previously saw so right now I can already see that by reducing the, the tolerance that I'm not picking up a lot of this deck over here there's less interference over here and it is still picking up the groove in between the two in between the two wood planks but that's because it's a very similar color to her jumpsuit thing yeah, so that's uh, how you use the magic wand tool it's just for a general selection based off pixels and contrast and density next we're going to move on to the crop tool so the crop tool will allow you to crop not only the photo but your actual workspace so right now this is an A4 page but once I begin to crop this you can see that I'm not only cropping the image but I'm also cropping my workspace so if this is how I'd like to crop my image I'm going to say OK and now my document size has completely changed so my document size right now we are looking at 1226 pixels by 1519 pixels whereas before the entire A4 page I clicked Ctrl Z to undo there's 2992 pixels width and 3992 pixels in height so this is how you can crop um, your actual workspace in general have your framing tool which works exactly the same as in InDesign your eyedropper tool which is quite general you have your spot healing brush and you can see there's a little, um, a little video animation just showing what it can do so let's see if we can get a nice example of that so the spot healing brush uh, we did just look at the animation so just to show you what the spot healing brush does so it's just trying to pick up where you started and where you end off from and trying to get rid of anything that's sort of not really supposed to be there so like that so for example what I want is I'm going to uh, draw or paint over the area that I want removed and then Photoshop is going to try and identify what is surrounding it and fill that area to try and remove what I've selected it's like a did of yeah I've just removed I've just removed the blue string so once again I uh, just selected the spot healing brush and I'm going to paint over or draw over the area that I don't want and now we have partially removed the blue string of the black the black article of clothing okay and then we have our normal brush tool so the shortcut for the brush tool is just B and we can set um, our size and our hardness over here on top so the hardness is going to depict how hard your uh, how hard your edges are so to give you an example of that then make this a bit bigger so right now our hardness is set to 100% so quite hard edges and then if I have to reduce the hardness to 0% same size of the brush and you can see there's quite a big difference 
it's simply just feathering out the edges of your brush bring it back up to about 80 percent around about there so you can see 80 percent to 100 percent there is quite a difference you can also play with the opacity of your of your brush as well as the flow the flow indicating how much of the color comes out with a single stroke so obviously the more you the more you move around with it uh, it's going to act more like a like a airbrush type of a type of an effect you can also select the airbrush effect you get quite a similar result where the start and end points is quite feathered out and in between over here it's quite of a quite a, a solid color okay and then with your brush tool as well you can adjust your size over here on top by a size you can move the slider or set the amount of pixels that you want another shortcut to adjusting your size is if you press the square brackets on your keyboard so the left square bracket will decrease the size of your brush make this a bit more visible create a new layer so the square bracket on the left will decrease the size of your brush you can pay attention over here it's now four pixels three two one and the right square bracket will increase it going up to ten and once it reaches ten it will increase by increments of five if you'd like to change your color over here so my two colors is a dark gray and a white I can double click the white and you have your normal color picker tool so you can adjust which color you want to be using and that's the color that I'm going to be using if for example uh, you'd like to switch between these two colors so you can always click the, the little shift icon up top here and you can change the color of this let's say to a blue color so right now I have a blue and a red color that's been loaded into my preview panel over here and I'm still on the brush tool I'm going to make the size a bit smaller using the left square bracket and all I'm going to do now is just draw a line and if I'd like to now draw another line right next to it but using the red instead of moving my mouse cursor over here on the left hand side to switch it I can simply press the X key and that's automatically switch it for me X key switch 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 that's quite a nice uh, a nice way of working a nice way to keep your workflow very fluid is by loading up the two colors that you want to be using constantly especially if you have a design in mind and just using the X key to toggle between them both so now we have a blank layer that has a whole bunch of pen tool on it and I want to erase it so the erase tool is right over here Alternative, alternatively you can press E to activate the erase tool it's a shortcut and the same right square bracket and left square bracket are used to increase and decrease the size and you can just erase by left clicking the eraser tool also has a hardness setting so you can determine how uh, hard your edges are or how soft your edges are we have the paint bucket tool so the paint bucket tool works like how you think it will work it's going to color the entire area of this layer and the shortcut for the paint bucket tool is by pressing G on your keyboard and then you can select and it's going to change the color based on what your top selected color in your preview over here is going to be I'm going to press X to make it red and click and that's how we can change the color I'm going to make this layer visible again and we're going to go into the smudge tool it should be the smudge tool yes yeah, so this is the smudge tool and with the smudge tool you can select whichever sort of brush you want to use and what it should be doing make, make sure I'm on the right layer is that it should be smudging your image so all it's doing is that it's blending all the colors and pixels together in the same motion that you're dragging with your mouse So continuously smudge from left to right to get this weird smudgy effect. Smudge it this way. And like that. So I have a weird sort of smudge effect that's going on. And it's a it's an entirely manual process, so you have full control over what's going on. 
It's going to undo these. There we go. And yeah, by the smudge tool, there's the sharpen tool as well. Increase the size. So you can see what the sharpen tool is doing. It's just sharpening up. Now, obviously, I'm doing this to the extreme. I'm holding down left click and I keep on moving around in circular fashion. And we can just undo that. So just to give you a nice idea, if you're looking over here at, at her face, right now it's quite fuzzy. And I'm just going to left click and drag across her face. And all it does is it brings out a little bit more contrast and applies more definition to whatever image or part of the image that you're using the sharpen tool on. So the sharpen effect can also be found inside the camera raw function if you want to be editing that way. And we're going to be looking now at the burn and dodge tools. So the burn and dodge tools. So right now we are going to be using the burn tool. So the burn tool is going to uh, help you add shadows or just redefine shadows again using the square brackets to increase and decrease size and you can see over here as i run the burn tool across the shadows on the face i'm making them much more darker so what the burn tool does is that it finds dark areas and it's going to increase their um, increase their depth so i'm going to run it over her over article of clothing over here as well as maybe some of these shadows just to bring out more of a contrast and then I'm going to undo so you can see exactly what was done. So undo over here the first one, undo second over here, and third on her face. So it does create quite a big difference. And the dodge tool does the exact opposite. So what the dodge tool does is it likes to bring up the whites and the highlights in your photos. And again, it's quite a manual process. So it can allow you to, um, to have much more control. So now I'm just making her, her highlights much more stronger over here on the neck as well as the forearms and with both the burn and dodge tool you can increase the exposure and the exposure is going to be uh, the strength of the tool itself there's also a much better way of doing this where you add a 50% gray full layer above the photo that you want to work on you change the blend mode to soft light and then you apply the burn and dodge tool and that's a nice way of just um, airbrushing on some highlights as well as uh, giving more depth to the shadows in your picture. I'm just gonna undo so you can see exactly what was done. So now we're looking at this form and her face. There we go. So that's just the burn and dodge tool. The pen tool works like any other pen tool. Uh, same applies with the type tool. Photoshop does give you the option to type vertically as well and to type as a mask. Uh, but with regards to that, um, you can type normally and then you can um, control select the layer so that it can um, act as a mask and you have that general selection you can start to erase parts of an image I'll show you that in a moment and then you have your shape tool so again just holding down my left click you get a rectangle rounded off rectangle ellipse polygon line and a custom shape tool a whole bunch of different shapes which you can play with so with regards to what I was talking about now so if I make, if I now make a type layer above the photograph layer and I want to uh, erase everything outside the type creating a mask. So I would make a new layer over here at the bottom of the Photoshop panel over here on the right hand side there's a little plus icon and if you click that you will create a new layer and I'm going to just double click and rename this to, to type. And I'm going to press T, the shortcut for the type tool. Make sure that I'm on horizontal type. And it will fill it with placeholder text automatically. I'm just going to type hello. Highlight it and increase the font size. And that's all fine. And then I want to move it right here maybe half half the water and half the deck and what I was talking about is that you can now select just the outlines of this type so if I hold down control and I hover over the layer that I want to I want to select so right over here by the type icon I'm going to left click 
you can see you sort of get these little marching ends that appear around the outline of the type. And what I can do now is that this area of the photo has been selected and I can just switch over to my erase tool, make the visibility of the type layer off. I'm going to toggle it off and now I can erase, get rid of the background layer. So now I've erased the word hello inside this photograph. Alternatively, you can, once the type is selected, then I can go to my selection and inverse and I can now erase everything other than the word hello. So that my word hello now contains the ocean and the deck. And just to make the background color layer invisible and I'm going to press control D to confirm my selection. Now I have the word hello that has the ocean and part of the deck inside of it. This is a very destructive process and I don't recommend using the erase tool for this. I'm going to be looking at masking in depth in um, our class one session two. But this is just a brief and general overview of Photoshop and how you can use different types of tools. Okay, I'm going to just delete our type layer. Something else which is quite interesting just to show you is that I have my photograph layer selected over here. And this is your mask tool, which we're going to be looking at a little bit later on. And over here, you can create a new adjustment layer for it. And this is very specific to your actual, um, your actual layer, which you've selected. So you can play with the levels, the curves, the exposure, vibrance, uh, a whole bunch of different sorts of things. So we're going to go to the curves first. And with the curves, all I'm going to do is just get a general sort of S curve, make this invisible. Very hectic, a little bit less, there we go. Just a general S curve and you can see what sort of a difference that makes to your image. Uh, another thing to notice as well is that if I toggle the visibility of the photograph layer off, you can sort of see that the curves layer has now been applied to all the layers below it, which is not exactly what I want. I only want the curves layer to apply to the photograph layer so I'm going to make sure that the adjustment curves layer is directly above the photograph layer. I'm going to left click it to highlight it. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to say create clipping mask. So now if I make this invisible, then you can see that there's nothing affecting um, this image of the flowers because now the entirety of this layer, this adjustment layer has been grayed out. So it's only applicable to the layer below it. And you can identify that by this arrow that's pointing to the layer below it. So this is now a clipping mask that's been applied. So you can tell over here I just made the cutout selection that we made earlier visible and you can see that there's quite a big difference just by using curves. To remove the layer however, that's fairly simple. You can either click it and press the delete key or you can click the little dustbin icon. Do you want to delete this? Sure, I do. Yes, delete, there we go. Okay, so this is just general, um, general sort of basics and just a little refresh of what Photoshop is. Uh, you also have the ability to make adjustments directly over here. Uh, you can change the mode. Currently we're on RGB. You can look at CMYK. You can turn it to grayscale. So I'm going to say uh, don't flatten. I'm going to discard that. So if I had to say flatten, it would merge all these layers together. So right now I'm in grayscale. And I just want to go back to RGB space, uh, don't flatten. Okay, that's not working, so I'm just going to undo. So um, I, I'm going to keep all these tutorial sort of videos quite rough. So if I do encounter any problems or something doesn't work out, so for example, yeah, I went to grayscale and I wanted to go back to RGB, it didn't quite work out, so I just un uh, pressed undo. Uh, I'm going to leave that kind of stuff in just um, just in case you run into similar sort of problems then we can just um, can really address them before it becomes a bigger problem so in case you do encounter this then you can sort of know how I sort of um, fixed it for myself and maybe that can help you find a way to sort out whatever problem you might be having. Uh, look at the image rotation we can flip the entire canvas so over here we can flip it horizontally or we can flip it vertically. 
uh, if you're looking at your layers so I'm just gonna create a new layer and just make some type quickly so I'm gonna make some type I'm just gonna say hello again and say hello I'm gonna give it the color of white highlight it first color of white and I'm gonna move it over the water should be fine and with the layer selected I'm gonna go down to the layers option over here on your top tab and I'll go to layer style and here you can add different sort of styles to your layer I'm using type because uh, the layer style applies to each letter of the type if I had to use an image then it's going to treat the image as a square frame and then apply the effect to the square frame so right now what I want to do is I want to apply a drop shadow let's apply a drop shadow I want the color to be black I want the blend mode to be multiply uh, the opacity I'm going to drop it down to about 25% you can adjust the angle I actually want to just zoom in so you can see exactly what's going on over here so over here I've just applied a layer style to the word hello you can see it's a drop shadow so if I double click the word drop shadow over here then the same setting is up here so if I change this to be slightly darker you can see exactly what's happening I can move the angle around of my drop shadow I can play with the distance away from the wood I can play with the spread so how much is it uh, quite feathered or is it quite strong and I can also play with the size so the size and the spread is going to determine uh, the size and distance and spread is going to determine the um, how visible the actual word is so like this it's very structured whereas if I increase the size a little bit more you can see we get something that's a little bit more feathered a little bit more natural as well as the spread the spread I can decrease or I can increase I'd rather leave it like that uh, so yeah this is entirely up to you you know there's a whole bunch of styles you can work with the color overlay uh, you can have an inner glow and in a shadow you can play with the stroke uh, you can bevel as well so there's a whole bunch of different layer styles and this not only applies to text but this applies to, to images as well and you also have a lot of different types of effects that you can use so if I click on the photograph go down to filter I'm uh, gonna go to blur let me just give a normal Gaussian blur so I just want to increase the radius quite a bit you can immediately see over here in the background I'm blurring the entire image also very dependent on um, what sort of effect you want maybe you only want to blur out certain certain parts of the image uh, there's also other effects you can you can pixelate it let's make it a mosaic so again a different type of a blur and we can stylize as well so let's go to find edges I have a whole bunch of different types of effects that you can play with see what you get let's try to distort maybe you want to pinch um, like that say okay so now I'll sort of have this bulgy effect but everything becomes pixelated and then lastly just something to touch on is the camera raw function so here if you uh, select your layer you go to filter camera raw it's going to open you uh, a new window and over here you have quite a lot of control to edit an image play with the colors and contrast uh, this works best if you have an actual raw file of the image but you can do it with whatever type of image as long as it's um, quite high high quality so you can play with the exposure can make it much more darker you can add light to it uh, you can play with the temperature as well if you want a more cool temperature something a little bit more warmer I uh, can play with the tints as well a little bit more of a green tint more of a magenta tint uh, look at the contrast you can adjust the values of the contrast your shadows your highlights shadows increase shadows decrease shadows you can play with the um, texture as well so as you can see the way it was set now I just zoom in a little bit more I'm going to increase the texture so it's just bringing out more definition in the wood and all the other textures 
that are defined by contrast. You can also look at the clarity of the image itself, which just generally sharpens up the entire image. Obviously, we're not looking to go to the extreme of either zero, uh, or, excuse me, negative 100 or 100, but we, whenever you start editing photos, subtle adjustments make the best uh, sort of end result. Let's look at the dehaze function. You can play with the vibrancy and the saturation of your images. And this is also a nice way to sort of get uh, good quality black and white images. Bring down shadows, increase the blacks a bit more, higher contrast, drop the highlights. It's a nice way to get quite a nice sort of black and white rendering of an image other than just uh, using the grayscale option. I can also play with the, let me just bring the vibrance and saturation back up. I can also begin to play with individual colors. You can start shifting colors. Uh, so if you notice on her face over here, we are playing with her, her cheeks quite a bit, more of a pinkish color, more of a red orangey color. Uh, the blues over here, Perhaps this one will change your hat. So the blue is making it more of a lighter, sort of a blue instead of a darker blue, or we can move more towards the purple side, looking at a hat. And we're looking at highlights. If you want to change certain highlight colors in this fashion instead of in the beginning. And then also the there's a distortion effect. So what we initially did with the pinching just now, see this looks kind of familiar. So it's just a different way of um, of editing images. I'm trying to see if I can find the, yeah, so yeah, sharpening as well. You can sharpen the image. Uh, you can do a luminance noise reduction. So that's when, um, this is just a general smoothening out of any sort of pixelation. So for example, when everything is on zero, you can sort of see in the water and in her face as well as the deck and just notice when I pull it to max, it sort of smooths everything out. It's kind of like a Snapchat filter thing. And you can also increase the detail so you can draw a bit more detail out, also keeping a bit of a smoother sort of water look in comparison to um, when you have nothing on, there's a lot of noise, a lot of uh, black pixels that are floating around there. And so this is just a general overview in Photoshop, nothing uh, too intense, nothing too hectic. It is quite fast, I'm trying to cover quite a few um, different processes and steps. Uh, but I hope this does make sense, I hope this does help you uh, sort of just come to grips with what the different functions are and it's just a little bit of a refresh. So nothing is completely foreign when we move into Photoshop. Yeah, I hope this is quite helpful and I'll see you in the next session. Peace.